Okay, so the first part of chapter 8 is the rates of change. And so what is a rate? And we use rates every day, all the time, so you're familiar with them even if you haven't been calling them a rate. A rate is when two quantities are related to each other, and it's ex an expression of how those are related. So in cases where quantities are changing, the change in one quantity with respect to the other can be expressed as a rate of change, as a rate, sorry. So an example of this would be speed, so meters per second. So when I'm driving, the distance that I drive is related to time. And in general, the way we write rate, and you'll see this if you take physics or anything, is rate equals the change of amount the change over the change in time. An amount can be money or distance, anything like that. And so uh, you can also do this generalized equation up here where rate equals the amount of quantity 1 over the amount of quantity 2. Okay, so this one uh, down here is the equation that kind of crosses from math into science. And this is the very, very basic idea of what rate is. And so rate always has to have two quantities. Okay, so if you're trying to find rate with only one quantity, you're not going to get very far. And part of the reason we were doing greatest common factors and finding slope and reducing is because in unit rates, we always want to express these in lowest terms. Okay, so basically we want to get the bottom part, so in this case uh, 10 kilometers divided by 40 minutes, we want it to be in kilometers per minute, so per one minute. And if you think about other speeds when we do kilometers uh, per hour, that's measured in one hour how many kilometers would you go. And so we always want to get the second term down to one. And so how would we get 40 to 1? Basically what we do is we divide the top by the bottom. Okay, and if you, whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom. So if we divide them both by 40. So 40 divided by 40, that was easy. We'll get one minute. And that's what we want, so that's perfect. 10 divided by 40, and you can do this on your calculator if you would like, or you can do it in your head. Basically, it's one quarter, or 0 0.25 kilometers. And so, to express the unit rate of 10 kilometers per 40 minutes, as a unit rate, in the lowest terms, we end up with 0 0.25 kilometers per minute. Okay, and we'll have lots of examples uh, that you can do this. And, uh, and you'll have lots of practice. So you have some practice in your worksheets too. A runner runs five kilometers in 35 minutes. Calculate the rate of kilometers per minute. So in this case, our rate, remember, equals two quantities. And so we're gonna do kilometers per minute, which is distance over time. And so our distance is 5 kilometers, and our time is 35 minutes. And so this is our rate, 5 kilometers per 35 minutes. But what we want is our unit rate, and our unit rate is the lowest term possible. So we're going to, just like we did before, divide both by 35. And that should give us kilometers per minute. So if you divide 5 by 35, you get 0 0.143 kilometers. 35 divided by 35 is 1. And so this is your unit rate. OK, so your unit rate is 0.143 kilometers per minute. Your rate is 5 kilometers per 35 minutes. So let's look at this one. A tank of water holds 300 liters of fluid and takes 4.15 hours to drain. Calculate the rate in liters per hour. So I look at things that they give me. They've given me time, and they've given me volume. 
I write out my generalized rate equation. So rate equals volume, and that was given in liters, over time in hours. So what we want to do is calculate the rate in liters per hour. So really the unit rate is what we want. In general, we have 300 liters per 4.15 hours. So what we're going to have to do is, again, divide them both by 4.15 because that's what's on the bottom. So when we do that, when we do 300 divided by 4.15, we end up with 72.3 liters. And we do 4.15 divided by 4.15, we get one hour. Okay. And this is what we would call the rate of drainage. Because it told us that it takes that long to drain. Okay, so a farmer's market sells one dozen fresh eggs for $3.50. Calculate the rate per dozen and per egg. Okay, so first we'll do the rate equals cost per dozen. And dozen means 12. So we know that it's three dollars and fifty cents per one dozen of eggs. One dozen. And so that is our rate per dozen. We didn't have to do anything to it. It told us our rate per dozen and so all we have to do is write it out. Now we want to know our rate which is the cost per egg. So we want per egg. Now in a dozen there are 12 eggs, so we know that it costs 350 for 12 eggs. And so we want our cost per egg. So we have to get 12 eggs down to one egg. So we divide both by 12 and we end up with 0 0.29 cents per egg. Okay, so it's quite easy to, to read the information and then just break it down. And always say it in your head because we use cost per unit all the time, right? Apples are, you know, or bananas are like, you know, 68 cents per pound, okay? Or I never know the kilogram ones even though they're in there. So we use this all the time. Gas is, you know, X amount of cents per liter or dollar whatever per liter. So we're using rates all the time. So if you just kind of try to say these things out loud, hopefully it'll be a little bit clearer. And now to convert rates. So if you need to change the units of a rate, like from miles to kilometers, like when we drive from Canada into the States, from dollars to cents, from hours into minutes, et cetera, et cetera, we need to set up what we call a unit conversion. Now, you can find unit conversions for, say, miles to kilometers um, anywhere on the internet. I have a sheet that I will post both on the website and I'll hand out next class. And you will have that um, sheet of common conversions to use during the test. And so it's just the basic things, like basically how to convert imperial into um, SI, so standard units. But hopefully, hopefully from dollars to cents and hours to minutes, those are things that, that you can do without a paper. So the basic way that we talk about converting units is to take, uh, we put what we want, and then we take what we have, so what we're given in the question and what we know. And what we know are the conversion rates. So we know there are 60 seconds in a minute. We know there are 100 cents in a dollar. We know there are 100 centimeters in a meter. These are things that are accepted. So the units want is the units that you want as your answer. So say you want miles from kilometers. Have is what you have. So in that same example, if you want miles and you have kilometers, then what you know would be how many kilometers per mile. 
okay? And this would be a conversion factor that you're provided with. So as an example, and um, when we talk about conversion factors, conversion factors, I'll do it here. This is always a ratio that can be written two ways. Okay, and you can flip it depending on what you need. So, for example, one liter equals 1,000 milliliters. So we can write this, our conversion factors, we can write this as one liter per 1,000 milliliters, or one milliliter, oh sorry, 1,000 milliliters per one liter. These are the exact same thing. One liter per 1,000 milliliters or 1,000 milliliters per one milliliter because this line here, this line here means equals. Okay, so you can flip it around depending on what you need. And we'll see an example of this. So, I drive 100 kilometers per hour on the highway. What is this speed or rate in meters per second? Okay, and anyone who's done any physics is familiar with this. Or if you're going on to do any physics, you'll have to do this a lot. So we're given rate as 100 kilometers per hour. But we want rate in meters per second. Okay, so if we write out want equals have times no. Okay, so we want meters per second. And we have 100 kilometers per hour. Now, both my distance and my time need to be converted. So we have to think about the conversion factors that we know. And you can start with either. I'm going to start with kilometers. Now, we know over here that in one kilometer there are 1,000 meters because kilo means a thousand so in one kilogram there's a thousand grams and then in terms of time we know that in one hour to go from seconds from hours to seconds we do 60 times 60 because there are 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in each minute so we end up with 3600 seconds Okay, now, again, we look at the way we write the ratio is depending on what we want to get rid of. We want to get rid of kilometers, so I'm going to put kilometers on the bottom. So in one kilometer, there are 1,000 meters. Now those cancel out, and right now I have meters per hour. My meters are good. I need to get rid of my hours to get seconds. Now again, I want to get rid of my hours, so I'm going to put that on top. In one hour, there are 3,600 seconds. My hours cancel out. Now, if I just look at my units left, I have meters over seconds. I want meters over seconds. So now I just have to do the math. So what I do is 100 times 1,000 times 1 divided by 3,600, and I end up with 27.8 meters per second. Let's try another example. Turkeys are sold for $3.61 per kilogram at the local market. The grocery store sells turkeys at $18.50 for 10 pounds. Is the grocery store's rate cheaper? So we have to convert um, these both into kilograms or both into pounds. And so if we take what we know, and again, these are, these are on your conversion factor sheet, uh, which you'll always have during a test or a quiz. So one pound equals 0 0.454 kilograms. Or we can say that one kilogram, and this one we have to say approximately equals 2.2 pounds. Okay, so... Uh, if we look at the two rates we were given, 
the market was 3.61 per kilogram. And so this is market. And the rate of the grocery store was 18.50 per, let's put that over there, 10 pounds. And if we reduce that to per pound, uh, you get a dollar eighty-five per one pound. Okay, and LB is pound. Now, to compare in the same, we have to compare in the same rate because we can't compare dollars per kilogram to dollars per pound uh, because it's not the same rate. So we're going to convert the pounds to kilograms because we're in Canada and we use kilograms here. And so we will take our want equals have times no. And we want dollars per kilogram. We have $1.85 per pound. And then I look over at my conversions here and I want to get rid of pounds and put it into one kilogram. So I'm going to put my one kilogram on the bottom and I look over here, one kilogram is approximately equal to 2.2 pounds. My kilograms cancel out, oh sorry not my kilograms, my pounds cancel out uh, and I'm left with dollars per kilogram which is what I want. And so I do 1.85 divided or multiply by 2.2 and I end up with 4.07 dollars per kilogram. So now I look at my rates, four dollars and seven cents per kilogram versus three dollars and sixty-one cents per kilogram and then I can say therefore the market rate is cheaper because three dollars and sixty-one cents is less than four dollars and seven cents and so you can see how conversions can be very very helpful uh, to save you money just basically in everyday life and let's do one last example um, I am hosting a party with uh, 180 guests I want to order dessert squares which come in boxes of 24 I estimate that I will need 2.5 squares per person how many boxes should I order so things that we know first of all is that uh, one box equals 24 squares, right? The squares come in boxes of 24. And we think that one person needs about 2.5 squares. Now, if we look at what we want, equals half times no. So we want the number of boxes. What do we have? Well, we have the number of guests. That's 180 guests or people. And now we have to choose um, which order we're going to put this in. So we want to get rid of people. So if I use this one, so per person, We have 2.5 squares. Squares. Now my people cancel out, and now I have squares, number of squares, but I want number of boxes, so I have to do one more conversion. So I need to get square, rid of squares, so I put my squares on the bottom, 24 squares and per one box. Now I cancel those, and I look what I have left, I have box left as my unit, and that's what I want. So to find the number of boxes, I take 180, I multiply by 2.5, I divide by 24, and I end up with 18.75. Uh, but of course, you can't go to a store and say, I would like 18.75 dessert squares, or boxes. So what you have to do is round that up, because you need to have more, not less. And so we end up with 19 boxes. Okay, so you can work on H Worksheet 
and uh, this is the worksheet that you got that has numbers 3 to 8 on it and so that's what I want you to do and at the very bottom I forgot to put a label up at the top it starts with the question a two liter carton of chocolate milk costs four dollars and twenty six cents and if you look at the very bottom it says 8.1 comparing interpreting rates so I want you to work on that on Tuesday we will have a a very small quiz uh, maybe a partner quiz I haven't decided yet and it will just be on um, so those basic things that we reviewed together so I could give you you know solve each equation I could ask you for a reciprocal or to expand um, and I could ask you things like find the greatest common factor or even to find the slope and then it can be obviously I will have some some rates of change okay so again don't you don't have to memorize the imperial to SI rates at all but things like how many uh, centimeters are in a meter uh, how many seconds in a minute how many minutes in an hour uh, those things are just assumptions uh, that I, I don't tell you uh, so if you have any questions please email me um, I will collect the worksheet on Tuesday but if you struggle with it you will have some time on class to go over it and to ask any questions uh, so I see you guys on Tuesday and uh, have a good weekend and enjoy all the sunshine <laughs>